Welcome to worship at Zion Lutheran Church and Pastor Ruhl. This is the feast of the Holy Trinity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, dwelling in majesty and mystery, renewing and fulfilling creation by your eternal Spirit, and revealing your glory through our Lord, Jesus Christ, cleanse us from doubt and fear, and enable us to worship you with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, living and reigning now and forever. Amen. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt is departed and your sin is blotted out. 
Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And then I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is the celebration of the Holy Trinity. I like to talk about the Trinity as a marvelous relationship a community. Jesus, the Son, loves the Father so much, he is obedient, even going to the cross for the sake of saving the world. The Father loves the Son so much, he raises him from death, saying yes to the way of grace and new life. The Holy Spirit is the power of love shared between Son and Father. So the Holy Trinity describes a love relationship, a community of love. It is a relationship that reaches out to the whole creation, gathering everything into the loving community of God. I base this description of the Trinity on the thinking of St. Augustine, who wrote in his very important book about the Trinity way back in the 300s, this. And the Holy Spirit, according to the Holy Scriptures, is neither of the Father alone, nor of the Son alone, but of both. And so intimates to us a mutual love, wherewith the Father and the Son reciprocally love one another. Now, although I like to share that description of the Holy Trinity, and it does have a good basis in the work of one of the great Church Fathers, I have to acknowledge that it is a very incomplete description. St. Augustine would admit as much. The story is told that shortly after St. Augustine had finished his theological tome on the Trinity, he was walking along the Mediterranean shore on the coast of North Africa when he came across a boy who kept filling a bucket with seawater and pouring it into a large hole in the sand. Why are you doing that? Augustine asked the boy. I'm pouring the Mediterranean Sea into that hole. The boy replied, and he was very serious. My dear boy, what an impossible thing to try to do, said Augustine. The sea is far too vast, and your hole is far too small. Then as Augustine continued his walk, it dawned on him that in his efforts to write on the Trinity, he 
He was very much like that boy. The subject was far too fast, and his mind was far too small. The truth is, we can never understand the mystery of the Holy Trinity in its entirety. But as people of God's church, we do need to grow in our knowledge. One of the, one of the great uh, slogans of the early church was, Faith seeks understanding. In other words, we know in our hearts that we believe in a loving God, and so with our minds, we seek to understand God more and more. That way, uh, we may love and proclaim God more and more. There is no way that I can dump the whole ocean of Trinitarian understanding into my sermon today, but I will give you just a few things to think about. I've already given, given you one description of the Trinity. I can also help you to understand the doctrine of the Trinity with four words. If you understand these four words, you'll know the core of the doctrine of the Trinity. The first word is one. There is only one God. The Bible was written in a world in which every country and even every household had its God or gods. So there were plenty of gods to choose from. But the writers of the Bible say consistently, from beginning to end, that there is only one God. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, we have a prayer that is sometimes called the Shema. And it was a prayer that Jews were supposed to say morning, noon, and night. And here's how it reads. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. And you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all of your strength. To believe in the Trinity, you have to believe that there is only one God. The second word you need is three. This one God is not a lonely king. This God, in his very nature, that always has been and always will be, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You see this in the Bible in many places, but let's take Matthew 28 as an example. Jesus is about to leave his disciples and ascend into heaven, and this is what he tells them. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Notice that when Jesus sends his disciples out, he says, baptize them in the name of God, which is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bring people into the same community of love in which I live. That's what it means to be my disciple. So one and three. And now the third and fourth words you need to describe the Trinity are community and unity. God is a community in unity. God is a community in that God exists as three persons, and those three persons are distinct. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. The Father is not the Spirit. But, and here's our fourth word, this community always lives in unity. They share the same nature. Each one is God. Each one is majestic and glorious, yet not one is greater than the other. They live together forever in love. To put it in human terms, no one has an ego problem. No one's going to get mad and walk out on the relationship. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit live in unity as one God forever. So those are your words. One, three, community, and unity. Now, you might be thinking, what difference does the doctrine of the Trinity make in my life? The truth is, the Trinity changes everything. The Trinity tells us the truth about God and keeps us from many wrong ideas we might have about God. The Trinity says that at the heart of all reality is a community of love. A community of love you were created by and invited to experience. Throughout history, Whenever people get the Trinity wrong, they get life wrong. Usually they start by getting Jesus wrong, like saying he's only human or less than God. 
Or they get God wrong by saying God is like one actor putting on three different masks. Either way, they end up with a God who is not a community of love. So in their attempt to follow God, they don't live their lives in community and in love. So the Trinity is not a small, minor issue. The Trinity shapes your daily life. Let's say you're struggling with sin, a temptation. You've given in. You're mad at yourself and feeling ashamed. You still need a God who gives and upholds the law. You will not be helped by a God who says, oh, don't worry about it. Go ahead and plunge into your sin. Mess up your life. But you also need a God who understands how hard it is here on earth, who has been tempted as you have been. Overcome it, and who out of that understanding forgives you. And you also need a God who will not give up on you, who will live inside you and give you the power to change. Well, what you need, and what I've just described, is the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. St. Paul describes this reality in Romans chapter 8. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. The Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Christian, Christianity's answer to your struggle with temptation is to give you the very presence and power of God inside you to help you. In this short passage, that presence and power are named as the Spirit, the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of Christ. In other words, the Holy Spirit, the Father, and Jesus Christ. Do you see how important the Holy Trinity is to our daily lives? The Holy Trinity is really on a rescue mission, to rescue you out of the clutches of sin, death, and the devil. While every analogy of the Trinity has its limitations, let me share a picture that illustrates one aspect of our triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they operate as one rescue team. Say a family is trapped in a forest fire, so a helicopter team undertakes a rescue. One fireman flies the helicopter over the smoky blaze to coordinate the operation and see the big picture. A second fireman descends on a rope into the billowing smoke below to track down the family and stand with them. Once he locates that family, he wraps the rope around them and attaching them to himself, and then they are lifted up together from the blaze into safety. In this rescue operation, the first fireman looks like the father who can see the whole field unclouded from above to orchestrate the plan. The second fireman looks like the sun, who descends into our world ablaze to find us, the human family, and identify with us most deeply in the darkness of the grave. The spirit is like the rope, who mediates the presence of the Father to Jesus, even in his distance, and raises Jesus and the human family with him from sin, death, and the grave into the presence of the Father. This illustration echoes the words of Jesus to Nicodemus. You must be born from above, and no one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent of the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And to sum up the rescue mission of the Holy Trinity, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In other words, God, the Holy Trinity, on a rescue mission. So, a few buckets of water today splashed into your continuing understanding of the Holy Trinity. And may you continue to have a faith that seeks understanding and praise Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
needs. Most holy God, make your church radiant with your holiness. Keep it steadfast in faith, sound in doctrine, loving in service, generous in giving, ardent in worship, and holy in living. Make it a lamp filled with the light of your presence, welcoming and guiding many to salvation in your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kindle the hearts and minds of the people of this congregation with your spirit. Unite us to your Son, and use us to proclaim the gospel in words and deeds to all those we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This weekend, Memorial Day weekend, we remember our beloved dead, especially those who have given their lives for their country as they were in the armed forces. Keep them ever in your care. Hasten the day when sin, warfare, and death shall be no more, and your eternal peace will reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather into your sons of grace all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name now before you. Visit them with your salvation. Support them and all who love them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most holy and blessed Trinity, we praise you for welcoming into your presence all who have died trusting in you. Keep our hearts firmly fixed on you, the Lord and giver of life. Bring us to the whole company of the redeemed of every time and place, every nation, tribe, and tongue into your presence, where we shall forever adore Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Lord and God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine in you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.